Hi guys, Danny here, and welcome to my mod review of the mod Reactor Craft by Rega. Reactor Craft is a very young mod, so there isn't a lot of information about it online. However, through experimentation, reading through the forum posts, looking at the different pictures that Rega posted, and talking to the mod author himself, I have amassed uh, the very basics of this mod. And by the end of the video, uh, I hope that you will also understand it and you'll be able to build your first fission generator so yeah without delay let's get started as you can see here there are a lot of different items and machines and reactor craft however like I said I'm only going to be covering the very basics and at that the very basics needed to make a basic nuclear reactor First we start off with the fluoride ores. As you can see you can get them in a lot of different colors and you can find them in the overworld from layers 32 to 60. And if you just mine them up what you will get are these fluoride crystals and there's one for every single color and they are necessary to create the uranium dust. We also have pitch blend which is the uranium ore. Pitch blend is quite rare and you can only find it at the end in mushroom islands and in the twilight forest and in the mushroom island and the twilight forest you will get them from layers 8 to 24 and like I said before they are quite rare if you mine the pitch blend you will get them in item form like so the next step is just to take the pitch blend that you've mined up and to simply put them inside of a furnace and let it smelt. It's quite simple and when it's completely done you will get back one of these raw uranium ingots. So next you just take the raw uranium ingots that you created and you put them inside of the uranium processor. I'm gonna get more ingots so I'm just gonna use this friction heater that should create enough things for me. What it also needs is some water. I'm just going to use this hand pump which was added by Rotary Craft. Like so. And it's also going to require the crystals that you mined up. Doesn't matter what color that you use. Like so. They'll all be processed inside of the uranium processor. As you can see, the raw uranium ingots is also being processed. This should have been made. This. I'll just throw more in there. Just turn this off. And there you go. The uranium hexafluoride is now done. So, what we do next is take one of these empty canisters made like so you take them in your hand and you right click as you can see the amount of uranium hexafluoride decreased however as I am in creative mode the canister did not fill up but if you do it correctly you will get yourself one of these uranium hexafluoride canisters like that and the uranium processor I don't need to supply it with any form of energy all I need to do is just put in the crystals and the raw uranium ingot give it some water and it'll keep going it's out of water so let me just fill that up again like that and there you go you can see the water decreasing and now it's nearly full of uranium hexafluoride again so yeah it's really that simple to get the uranium hexafluoride canisters Next we go to the isotope centrifuge. The centrifuge requires a lot of speed to function, however it requires little to no torque. Let me just turn this on and you can see the isotope centrifuge spinning. So now I take the canisters that I had in my hand and I right click on the centrifuge and we should see it. There you go, it's nearly full. Let me just click it a few more times. And it's completely full but it's not processing. That is because the speed is not high enough. If I just go a bit higher than that, 
still not working and if I go higher still there you go now it's working so yeah like I said it requires a lot of speed and if you do it properly you should see the progress bar on the side now the isotope centrifuge uses up the uranium hexafluoride and it turns them into one of two things which we should see in a couple of seconds the progress bar is nearly full and let's see what it makes there you go it made the depleted uranium dust now the centrifuge can make one of two things it can make either the depleted uranium dust or it could make the enriched uranium dust uh, from testing I found out there's a higher chance of it making the depleted uranium dust but if you give it enough time it will make the enriched uranium dust as well like so the depleted uranium dust is at the right hand corner and the enriched uranium dust is in the left hand corner so the progress bar is nearly full again let's see what we get next and we got the depleted uranium dust again now I'll let the machine keep going until I've made at least one of these enriched uranium dusts and I'll see you guys when I do so the centrifuge was taking a lot of time so I simply went to the uh, centrifuge that I had set up before and as you can see from here the depleted uranium dust was made on one side and the enriched uranium dust on the other and you can see from the ratio here that there's a bigger chance that the depleted uranium dust will be made rather than the enriched uranium dust however we need the enriched uranium dust so let me just take this out so next step is we take the enriched uranium dust and put four of them in a crafting grid and we get ourselves one of these fresh uranium fuel pellets the fresh uranium fuel pellets is the one they'll be using and therefore is the one that's actually more important to us we can also make the depleted uranium with the depleted uranium dust however that has no use for us at the moment so checking back on the isotope centrifuge that I set up just there that has only now created its first enriched uranium dust compared to the 15 depleted uranium dust so as you can see you might have to wait quite a bit for the enriched uranium dust to be made so next we have the two most important machines that we're going to need the fuel core and the steam boiler the fuel core is used like so we just take the uranium fuel pellets and put it inside these four slots in the fuel core and we can see it's working because it shoots out these blue neutrons there you go the science behind it I'll probably put it up in the annotations and if you have this set up correctly it will also produce heat and if you have the steam boiler right beside the fuel core and you're pumping water inside of the steam boiler you can use it to create steam and then you can use the steam to produce energy if any entities get hit by these neutrons these little blue things you see flying around they will get radiation poisoning and there is no way to prevent that like in IC2 where you have the protective gear in reactor craft if you get hit you will be poisoned regardless of what you wear so yeah be very careful when you're dealing with these fuel cores or the active ones at least there is a way to stop the neutrons from poisoning you and that is to use blocks made out of very dense materials but for the cheapest one you can use this concrete just made out of sand and clay all you need to do is just put it in front of the line of path for the neutron and we should see that the amount of neutrons that pass through should be lowered and there you go the number has been reduced to just a few neutrons every couple of seconds instead of a neutron every second if I just destroy this here we can see what happens when I have no concrete around as we can see the neutrons are being fired from all sides quite frequently and if I put the concrete down again there we go the number has been lowered 
However, I can stop it completely. All I need to do is add two layers of these concrete, like so. And if we do see a neutron flying out, it should be through this side. Let's give it a second. There you go. One just passed that way. And that's it. As you saw, the number has been lowered and now completely stopped. So yeah, when you're making yourself a stable nuclear reactor, it's very important to use this concrete unless you want to get poisoned every time you come close to it. And next we have the item that actually produces the energy, the turbine. The turbine, as we can see from here, is made like so in a work table. And what I have here is the steam that will be produced. Here I just have two turbines stacked alongside each other. From testing I found out that you can have five turbines stacked with each other like so. And you can see the overall turbine stacking and getting a bit bigger until the fifth one. As you can see from the sixth one it doesn't fit into the main turbine and it doesn't work alongside the main turbine. So let me just destroy this and go to the main two. Now how the turbine works is if you have steam going up into the first bit there like so you can see that turbine starts to move and if you supplied it with enough steam the turbine will keep on spinning and will produce a lot of energy. If I right click there you go. Now the steam you can just let it fly off into the atmosphere or you can use one of these condensers. If I right click with the angular transducer we can see that the tank has 20 milli buckets of the water but if I was to let the steam touch the condenser like so a couple of times and check it again with the angular transducer we can see that the amount of water inside of the condenser has increased so yeah you can use the condenser to change the steam back into water after it has turned the turbine because if you see here when the steam turns the turbine what it actually does it it seeps back goes through all of the different blades of the turbine and escapes into the atmosphere from the back so if we had the whole thing enclosed then we could have put the condenser on the roof and that would return all the steam back into water which we can pump back into the system. A working bill could be as simple as this. Uh, you put in the fuel pellets inside of the fuel core and as the neutrons travel from one to another they heat each other up which boils the water inside of the steam boiler and then you can just pump the steam out. I actually had a build like this working and I know for a fact that it does work and but as a simple note about the steam boiler you have to pump the water from the bottom and you have to take the steam from the top. You can't do it in any other way for example you can't really pump the water through the sides. See it doesn't connect however if I go underneath there it does connect and it doesn't connect from the top either so yeah the water has to be pumped from the bottom and the steam has to be taken out from the top however I have a build here which actually looks like a build uh, I could do something as simple as that but just to make it look nicer I made it this way the glass surrounds the turbine to stop the steam from escaping and on the top I have a line of these condensers to be honest I could probably have changed all of these glass into condensers all of the glass at the top but I just decided to keep just one line to be condenser I don't have any pipes connected to the condenser instead the condensers here are just to show you that it can be done rather than to actually do it myself and here I have the turbines all connected I have a dynamometer at the back to see how much power is being made. Uh, here is the steam grate to release the steam. 
and I have the fuel core in this design and I cannot stress this enough that this is not the most efficient build there are much much more efficient builds but I decided just to keep the shape because I like it and so I can have two concretes on each side as you can see there two there two there two there so it's mostly for show rather than for efficiency sake so I'll see you guys in a couple of seconds after I put fuel inside of the fuel cores and the steam starts rolling and the turbine starts spinning and there you go the steam is being released and the turbine is spinning and I am producing a lot of power and as you can see the steam is being trapped by the glass and eventually it will find its way to the condenser and then it will be converted back into water Meanwhile, I'm still producing a lot of energy and I will keep producing the energy until all this fresh uranium pellet has been depleted. In fact, there you go. Some of it might have already been depleted. The fuel core in the middle, obviously, because the fuel cores from these two lines will release neutrons and will make the fuel from the middle fuel core here be used up faster. And yeah. I think the steam has stopped and there you go the production and the production of power has been stopped there is some steam still floating around it will probably eventually find its way to the condenser and be converted into water if not it'll keep on spinning there and yeah there you go and I've covered all of the basics of reactor craft if you like the video please leave a like or subscribe for more Minecraft videos. And as always, thanks for watching.